Okay, 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 okay. I think that we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nightshade. You're the drug. I am so excited to be streaming this game for you guys tonight. I have um, backed this game on Kickstarter, full disclosure, um, after I played the demo, uh, which we checked on the channel a while ago, and it was pretty fantastic. Um, so I am super, super excited that the game is now finally out. I've been like anxiously waiting for its release. I just really love um, the concept of the game itself, and I really enjoy the character designs. They look so distinctive and, and different and vivid and colorful. This whole entire game looks like super saturated with color, so that's something that I really, really enjoy about it. Um, so yeah, uh, some things to note about this game. I think that um, there might be... I'm not quite sure if there's any flashing images, but there's certainly like a menu that kind of just for funsies tends to be like a little bit of a glitch using a little bit of a glitch effect. So just so you guys are aware that might be something that like bothers some people. Um, I'm not quite sure how often we'll be dealing with things like flashing lights or anything like that. In fact, I should probably go ahead and I should check the um, review here, uh, the, the game page here just to see. Um, Something else to note is that this is certainly not a, a game that I think is for the faint of heart. It is something that is centering on uh, pretty, pretty, pretty dark themes. It's a romantic thriller. So there's violence. There's there's going to be murder. There's going to be blood. There's going to be assault. Uh, there is some fictional drug use mentions of a drug syndicate. Um, there are abusive and toxic relationships. And there may, in fact, be some uh, explicit content, and hopefully we will not come across it in the uh, LP tonight, because um, I will unfortunately have to click through as fast as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, so that is that. And so we're going to get started here in just a few minutes. I really love this menu, I gotta say. But how is everybody doing tonight? I'm doing well. I got new makeup today, so that's been fun to kind of try out. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. I got too excited, and so then I just kind of pulled it up to get started early. It's very cute. Ooh. Yeah, so... I also was getting ready for, um, I was getting ready tonight and then I got a notification that my little cat, his new, um, collar came in and it's, it looks really cute on him. His name is Kiwi. So it actually has Kiwis on it. So he is going to, um, wear it once he stops trying to attack it. I spent a lot of money on this collar cause I was like, it's one collar. He's rarely ever going to wear it gonna get him a nice collar. Oh, hello. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Hello. I think that we're just gonna dive right into it. I know that technically we're not supposed to start until eight. Naughty, naughty, but I'm just gonna jump right into it just to make sure my cat is asleep right now. That's also why I'm kind of keen on jumping right into it because we only have so much time before he... Oh my god, I love the developers for this. <laughs> they let me turn it off. <laughs> they let me turn the explicit scenes off. Turning will still allow you to select, but the explicit scenes will be skipped. That is fantastic. I love streamer-friendly choices like this. I love it when devs have the foresight to put things in like this because I'm just like, oh my god, you, it makes it difficult to stream games when you can't censor things. Like, if, if you frequented this channel before, this is a public stream tonight, so I don't know who else, who all is here. I'm seeing regular people here, so they know for sure. Um, but this is one of the reasons why I can't stream like Camp Buddy is because I have no way of turning off all the explicit content, even though I would argue that 90% of that game is very, very chill and like not spicy. Um, it's got like that 10% of super sexual scenes that I can't really get into. So this is, this is, this is chef's kiss. This is chef's kiss right here. Chef's kiss. 
we're turning it off because we're streaming and I can't edit anything out that is violent or graphic. We've seen this before. We've seen this before, but this animation is so pretty. Yeah, who knows? Maybe people make a living off that sort of thing. Why? What's hitting you? Oh. oh my god, I love it. It was good before, it's still good. <laughs> is that the, a cat meme? Of, I'm hungry. Let's go get something. Maybe later tonight. I've got somewhere I've got to be. Ooh, so yeah, about gay assassins. I love it. I love it. The visual model. I just love. I just love it. I just love how hyped it is. Oh, Jesus. Okay, you don't have to say it that loud. You got somewhere you gotta be. Well, I don't. Okay. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Beep. High above the restless heartbeat of the city, a hooded figure crouched near the edge of a towering skyscraper. Strands of pink bright hair were jostled about as a gust of wind blew through them. His steely gaze scanned the flow of traffic in the bustling crowd below. It was as if he were waiting, watching, searching for something or someone. Suddenly, a sharp buzzing cut through the night air. The masked figure reached into his pocket and pulled out a phone. He glanced at the bright screen, two words shining back at him. Target located. Suspect has was seen fleeing from Strexa facility 0915. Wordlessly, the man slid the phone back into his pocket. He turned and swiftly disappeared down the fire escape. Quiet and precise. The sound of labor breathing. Oh my god, for a second I thought that was a box of tissues. And I was like, why is that a box of tissues? That's That looks like it's donuts. I apologize for everybody here. Thank you for saying my eyeliner looks good. I kind of messed it up. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for also saying that my hat looks nice. It's been a while since I've worn this hat, so I'm very excited to wear it tonight. It's giving me, like, kind of witchy vibes, which I also really appreciate. Um, the sound of labor breathing echoed through the alleyway as a frightened man staggered to his feet near a dumpster, clutching a purple box close to his body. Shadows were cast along brick walls adorned in rip posters and haphazard graffiti. One shadow stalked the other from the cover of darkness, silently approaching. Paranoia was setting in like the slow push of a syringe. I love that description. What was... What was that? The man gripped at his chest in fear, his voice cracking in panic. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what was that? Like zoinks, kind of? Aw, oh, thank you. Thank you. Beads of sweat trickled down his brow. He was being hunted. Damn it, I skipped that. Okay. No, wait, just take it back. Oh, oh he's gone. He's out. He's down for the count, folks. The small purple box fell to the ground, knocked slightly ajar by the impact. The killer picked it up, ignoring the body next to it, and was gone soon after. Small purple box. What could this be? The fluorescent lights overhead buzz, filling the silence between the cashier and the young man at the counter. He was taking an obnoxiously long time to order his food. Something about the lazily swept floor and water-stained ceiling tiles seemed to suggest that this was the place for peak junk food. It was without a doubt Sasha's favorite burger joint in the entire city. Didn't we get the onion death when we played the demo? I wonder if the onion death is still here. They had really good descriptions for things on this menu. If this was how he died, greasy burger in hand, then he was happy to go. The cashier cleared her throat impatiently. Finally, after what seemed like forever, Sasha tapped his fingers on the countertop and began his order. I'll have, uh, yes, the onion death. We're gonna do it. I'll have the onion death, no lettuce. Okay, that'll be 460 pounds. Sasha pulled, I think, I, I don't I don't know. Don't ask me to know any forms of foreign currency. I might be able to recognize yen because that's just like the Y with the two lines through it. Sasha pulled out his C card and tapped it against the register. Yeah, cool. See you later. Later, Sasha. The cashier set the to-go bag beside the register and shot him a quick finger gun goodbye. Ah, yes, the anxious bisexual goodbye. Sasha swiped the goods off the counter and left the hole in the wall, impatiently digging into the paper bag to retrieve and unwrap his burger. 
that's not pounds. I figured it wasn't pounds. <laughs> not wasting a second, he shoved the burger into his mouth, chewing delightedly. Oh man, this is the best. Oh my God, a good burger seems really good. Guys, I had like an out of body experience yesterday. I had a really good burrito yesterday and it sent me, it sent me places. Nina settled over the city and painted the buildings in hues of purple and blue. A string of streetlights led a path down the empty side road, guiding pedestrians home from their busy day. Sasha with his burger in hand passed by a collection of vending machines near an alley intersection. Affordable insurance claims are here. His free hand dug into his pocket and pulled out a C card, pressing it to the vending machine scanner. The machine flashed a lack of funds error code. Sasha groaned. His balance was clearly drained. He had no cash on him, and lint was not a good currency. Ah, oh, man. With a defeated sigh, Sasha continued on. It wasn't often that he walked this way when heading home. The graffitied walls and familiar mismatch of Building styles were always a welcoming sight, though. Sasha glanced over at a small playground near the side street he was on, noticing the rusty equipment and how very neglected it all seemed. He grinned. Oh, wow. I haven't come this way in forever. I used to hang out here all the time. Nostalgia nudged at him as he drew closer to the playground, taking in the familiar sight curiously. I played at this park every day after school, not that there's much to play with. Playground looks exactly the same as it always has, just a big empty dirt lot. Well, and the swings, and a... Uh, one busted slide, and the monkey bars I fell off of once. Sasha walked over to the empty swings and slowly sat down, unwrapping the rest of his burger. He took another bite and looked around at the desolate playscape. His free- you're gonna get tetanus. I, I swear to God, the number of times I've said you're going to get tetanus. Can you guys tell that I have a fear of tetanus? His free hand grabbed onto the rusted chain that held him up while he swung back and forth a bit. Honestly, though, this park kind of sucks. I'm surprised it wasn't bulldozed for apartments or something. Kids didn't really play your back yet then, and they still don't. I mean, look at this place. He laughed to himself quietly, taking another bite of the burger. He was far too hungry to wait until he got all the way home to finish eating. It's pretty much just a place for teens to smoke and skip class. I mean, even I did it. Back then, there weren't a lot of kids to hang out with, really. I guess Mishka was here for a while, but he doesn't count. But it's whatever. It beats sitting in an empty apartment every night. Sasha dug the tip of his shoe into the mulch beneath him, lost in thought, momentarily forgetting the world around him while memories played out in his mind. <gasps> little baby! Oh, he's a little baby! I usually stayed out pretty late, but when the sun disappeared behind the Krokoko... Oh, I cannot pronounce that word. Krokushkova. Krokush... Krushkyovka. 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 Yeah? Krushkyovka. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know, friends. Knew the school I'd head home. Walking home alone was fine since we didn't live very far. Plus, there was this little corner store right by our apartment that I always stopped in. That place had everything. Like, I could grab dinner for mom and me when she worked late. I'd also pick her up some of this apple poroski she loves so much. Apple poroski she loves so much. Yeah, it's Russian. Like, I think that this is definitely Russian. Um, I swear sugar runs through her veins. Probably where I get it from. She still can't stay mad at me if I give her one of those. He grinned fondly at the thought. Man, time really flies. Oh, hello? Huh? Sasha, startled by the sound of his phone. I can? I can highlight the word? Oh, no. Oh my god. Now I need to click on the words. Okay, someone point it out in the chat when another purple world comes up because y'all know I have a short attention span. Oh my god. I, I should have clicked on those. Oh, okay. Just highlight it. Okay. And then it'll pull up. Okay. Thank you for the tip. Sasha startled by the sound of his phone buzzing away in his pocket, reaching to his jacket and pull out the device. <gasps> Hey man, Alexi gave me this number and said if I want anything to meet up with you. Is that good? My place or yours, sir? I'm off the clock. Oh, I love his... F wow, rude. Guess Alexi, g Alexi gave me the wrong number. I only meet up in public. When do you want it? T Teren, and how's tomorrow at Jukebox? Okay, I'll meet you at the bar tomorrow afternoon. What the hell? He shoved his phone. I love how 90s this jacket is. I want this jacket that he's wearing. I would wear the hell out of that. 
He shoved his phone back into his pocket, his brows furrowing in irritation. Just give my number to anyone. That's fine. Totally not creepy at all. The earlier feeling of fondness had melted into agitation. Sasha crumpled the burger wrapper into a small ball and tossed it into a nearby recycling can as he stood from the swing. Getting really late now. I should probably head out. He glanced over his shoulder at the empty alley behind him, a small chill prickling the back of his neck. Yeah, it was time to go. The streetlights began to spread out the further he walked, becoming less and less frequent along the way. The darker the past became, the more Sasha found himself glancing over his shoulder, his hands shoved into his pockets. His pace quickened. Oh my gosh. <gasps> God, you can highlight it. Yeah, I kind of know what the Poroshkis are because um, when I lived in Oregon, Oregon, I think the third most common ethnicity is... Um, oh my God, they did make the jacket? They made the jacket? Oh, now that makes me really sad. Now my heart is broken. Oh, bro, I would love a jacket like that. It's so cool. Um, so anyways, what I was seeing in Russia, uh, in Oregon... The third most common ethnicity um, is 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 Russian. So those were actually pretty common. It was pretty common to like meet somebody who had like Russian heritage at a certain point. So Poroshkis and like Russian restaurants were a little bit more common. Um, and I believe I used to be able to go to the store and see Poroshkis um, in certain frozen sections. But my Oregon friends can probably call me out on that one if I'm wrong. Neon signs flickered irregularly in the darkened shop windows that lined the street. The occasional pedestrian became few and far in between. Sasha looked up and saw he was approaching his apartment building, a newfound urgency ballooning in his chest. Keys. Where were his keys? Flies beat against the corridor, light bulb behind him. Sasha stood in front of his apartment door, hands fumbling for the keys he knew had to be somewhere on him. He sighed with relief when he found them. The jacket was a $500 Kickstarter pledge? Oh, you know they know their audience, though. They knew. They knew. And I, I appreciate that. Oh, I bet it was a really cool jacket. And quickly shoved the small key into the deadbolt, turning it sharply. Oh my god, it's such a pretty jacket. There was no click of the lock. Sasha's heart fell onto his stomach. Did I leave this unlocked? I could have sworn I locked it. His heart raced in his chest. As quiet and careful as he could, Sasha turned the handle and pushed. The door eased open and just okay, <laughs> eased open a crack and slowly widened enough for him to slide through. His eyes were wide in the darkness of the small studio apartment, trying to adjust as best as they could. He cautiously reached over and set the keys onto the TV stand next to him. Something had been knocked over, something close. He turned his head in the direction of the noise, now noticing the light that shone through the crack of the bathroom door. Ooh. A spike of panic sent a burning, rigid sensation along his arms and gripped his chest tightly. Weapon. He needed a weapon. As silently as he could, Sasha reached into the drawer near the TV stand and pulled out a knife. It was impossible to calm the heartbeat he could feel pulsing in his throat. He took a few steps forward, holding the knife close. He advanced slowly towards the bathroom door, his heart pounding. Every hair on the back of his neck stood on end, and his hand clenched in a white-knuckled grip around his weapon. Sasha lifted his other hand and grasped the door handle. He tried to slow his breathing with one long, shaky exhale. Suddenly, he yanked the door open with all his might and lunged into the bathroom, knife raised. Ooh. I, I don't know, homie. Oh, uh, oh no. Oh, I'm staring at this man's crotch. Okay, <laughs> okay. Sasha found himself caught in a firm grip. His knife hand immobilized. Painting, he looked up at the ma man's face and recognition finally filtered through his adrenaline. Instantly, irritation replaced his earlier sense of dread. Mishka laughed, his fingers uncoiling from around his friend's wrist. He stepped away and leaned casually against the doorway. His arms were crossed. You couldn't just send me a text like a normal person. Instead, you break in? Well, if I had a key, I wouldn't have to break in. Mishka waved his hand dismissively. No, that's not how this works. How many... Sasha sighed harshly and pitched the bridge of his nose. How many times have I said? So, you never answered. Were you scared? Mishka smirked and pushed off the doorway, heading towards the nearby couch. I'm pissed off. 
Sasha spotted the air near his friend as he passed by, though this clearly didn't faze him. He sighed and followed Mishka into the living room. Knife still in his hand, he opened the drawer beneath the TV and set the weapon back inside. He then swiped at the light switch near the front door. Light flooded into the rest of the apartment. You're still not getting a key. In fact, you're further from a key you've ever been. Sasha shook his head slowly in disbelief, but couldn't help a small grin. Oh, come on. You're not totally thrilled by my lockpicking skills? One leg lifted and crossed the other while Mishka settled back onto the couch cushions. No. Sasha chuckled mildly before he plopped down beside Mishka. Hmm, all right. What would it take to get a new key then? He leaned towards Sasha, loosely setting his arm on the back of the... I, I know, right? I'm just like, oh, Mishka, Mishka, Mishka hot. Mishka doesn't even have to try. So loosely setting his arm in the back of the small couch. I think as your best friend, I'm long overdue for one. <laughs> I think you're full of it. Sasha's annoyed tone was betrayed by the small smile he wore. And there's nothing you can do to get a key. Sorry, except for maybe cry about it. <laughs> he leaned away from Mishka, reclining against the opposite end of the sofa. He made sure to push his legs into the space between them before curling up. Okay, well, now that I'm here and I'm not going anywhere, what do you want to do? Oh, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Breaking into my apartment is a weird way to ask if you can hang out. Okay, I get it. Ask before breaking in. Are you hungry? Not waiting for an answer, Mishka pulled out his phone and started looking for delivery options. I actually already ate, so I'm good. Who are you and what have you done with my Sasha? Bzz, bzz. A muffled ringing was heard behind Sasha, or maybe it was beneath him. Sasha shifted around as he played a game of hot and cold to find his phone. Wow, I didn't realize it was already this late. Can I check? Oh, no. I love the save menu. We're going to save. I love it. Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. The resume button is really, really obvious, and yet I was struggling. Wow, I didn't realize it was already this late. Hey, Mom. Hi, honey. Are you busy? I'm always busy, you know, adult work meetings and doing stocks for adults. Why? What's up? Oh, my little businessman. That's so cute. Oh, I'm at the market. Well, I'm on the train to the market and it's a little loud. There's a guy here playing the guitar. Can you hear it? Hang on. Can you hear it? Did she just try to? Yep, mom. Yep, I can hear it. It's a bit late for grocery shopping. Using the armrest as leverage, Mishka pushed himself toward the phone and practically grinned into the receiver. Hey, Ma. Well, I had to get Mimi. Is that you? Hello, dear. What are you up to? Shopping at the tower? Mishka draped himself lazily over Sasha in an effort to get closer to the phone. I forgot to go out this morning, and these coupons expired tonight, so I gotta use them now. Oh, Mimi, your C card. Did you get that updated yet? Yeah, got it. Yeah, Ma, I got it. It should be taken care of. Okay, good. Just make sure the census deadline's coming up. Oh, thank you. Okay, dears. I can't shop and talk at the same time. I'll drop my phone, and you know these things are expensive. Do you know how much I paid to repair this thing last time? Okay, bye, Mom. Bye. Okay, okay, love you. The phone went quiet. She likes me more. Mishka was still draped over Sasha like a tire koala, clearly not intending to move. Yeah, because you can reach the top cabinet for her. That's probably true. He laughed softly, a gentle smile spreading across his face. You're incredibly lucky, you know that? For getting calls from the grocery store? Sasha's gaze stayed on his phone as he began to aimlessly scroll through his messages, despite no one having texted him. I was going to say he's lucky because his mom's kind of hot, but like that's just me. That's just me. I'm just calling it as I see it. She's a very attractive woman. We, we stand attractive women. No, I'm serious. She's an amazing mom and you're really lucky to have that. Mishka's gaze settled on his friend as he rolled himself off of Sasha and back into his reclined state against the couch cushions. Sure, yeah. Sasha continued to look at his phone as he spoke. Did you come over for a reason or? Yeah, to hang out with you, dummy. Reaching forward, Mishka began to take his shoes off, unstrapping the Velcro around his ankles. Well, I have a drop across town tomorrow, so whatever we do, I can't be up all night. So what are we doing then? I guess we're gonna... Let's just play some video games. Maybe maybe there's some mini games. No, well, you know, you'll never guess what I found while I was cleaning yesterday. I can't believe I forgot it was in my closet. Mishka huffed in amusement as he watched his friend roll off the couch and crawl towards an old box that sat on the floor near the television. You cleaning? Doubt. Do you remember this thing? Everyone had one. Sasha moved out of the way to show Mishka his old video game console. There was a smooth layer of dust coating the system, save for a few finger smudges. Are you serious? Mishka's brows lifted in amazement. It was hard to believe that Sasha still had that dusty old console. Will it even turn on? 
Sure? Sasha took a deep breath and blew the dust off the old plastic, coughing when he accidentally inhaled some. I guess it just needed a little... I cannot say that word on stream. I apologize. Me too, honestly. Oh my god, that's enough. Well, he suggested it. Guess we better do it. You know what I'm saying? Sasha? Sasha tried to laugh again, but all he could do was choke. Mishka's lips stretched into a smirk while Sasha suffered on the floor, but he was soon distracted when he spotted something a bit more interesting. Is that what I think it is? Mishka sat up straight and nodded toward the small case near the console. What? Sasha's voice sounded suspiciously clear of dust now that he was done milking it. Oh, yes! Sasha lifted a slightly less dusty case, holding it up to the light like a trophy. Is that Dragon Lad? It's Dragon Lad. Mishka hunched forward to get a closer look. I can't believe I forgot about that game. How long has it been? Sasha shrugged and flipped the box over, squinting at the back cover. The poor graphic design made the text a bit hard to read. It was back when I lived in my mom's place. That had to be at least eight years ago. Probably even longer than that. Oh my god, do you remember that peanut kid? Peanut kid? Oh my god, yes! Sasha snickered at the long-forgotten memory. He would come over all the time after school with us. What was his name? I don't even remember. Wasn't it like Stan, Steven, something like that? I don't remember either. I just remember all the peanut shells. Oh my God, the peanuts, dude. He was obsessed with peanuts. I remember his mom packed him a little baggie all the time, but they still have the shells on them. Who eats shelled peanuts? Mishka shook his head with a laugh before running a hand through his hair, teeth flashing in a smile. I mean, I used to, that's what I was going to say. I was like, some people like will suck the salt off the outside and then they crack it open and then they eat it. So some people do that. I'm not saying I ever did that. I'm not saying I'm an offender, but I mean, I used to suck the salt off the outside and then throw them back into the bag. Gross, right? You're a menace. And that crack when you open a shelled peanut is kind of satisfying though. Sasha tilted his head back with a smile. Oh man, but mama gets so pissed when she came home. All those peanut shells on the living room floor. I don't know what he's doing these days. I haven't seen or heard of him since then, really. Probably eating peanuts somewhere. But seriously, he was kind of weird. My weird or weird weird? Your weird is your own brand. This kid was weird, and he wasn't very good at Dragon Lad. Well, let's see if we still are. Are you going to put it in? I'm sorry. It's fine. Mishka motioned to the game case in Sasha's hand. That's what she said. Oh, my God. Okay. Sasha put, pressed his fingers into the case's tightly sealed ledge until it popped open so hard that the disc flew, flew out. Don't break it before we get to play it. Things practically an antique. Sasha chuckled. I'm trying, okay? He plugged the system in and pressed the power button. After a small delay, the power light blinked on. We have a pulse. It's a gamer miracle. You'll probably need the cord. There's no way these controllers are still charged. Sasha grinned as he stood up and returned to the couch with the old controller in hand. When do I get to play? When you decide to stop breaking to my apartment. That was like an hour ago. You gotta put the pass behind you. Oh my god. It's literally Spyro, and I love that. Guys, I got the Spyro Remastered Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch, and there was something so comforting about it. I was like, oh, is this what it feels like to come home after a long time? Is that what that feels like again? It it was so nice. And also they made all the dragons like really hot in the redesign. So that's, that's quite interesting. I was like, these dragons are a lot more attractive now that like they're more defined models. Anyways, before Sasha could even humor that comment, the familiar sounds of the old gaming system filled the room. A second later, music blared loudly from the TV. Oh, you do have the original three games? Oh my god, the first one I'm working my way through, and I'm like, that's right, the first one's annoying because Spyro can't swim, but he can swim in the other ones. And I remember how, like, in the subsequent Spyro games, um, how cool it was that Spyro had, like, he could swim. Oh my god. It was like a game changer to me as a kid when I saw that Spyro could swim. I was like, you, you're kidding me, right? Because whenever I died as a kid, it was because I would forget that Spyro couldn't swim. Um, also, I just thought that if I put Spyro in the water long enough, he'd, he'd learn how to do it. I didn't, I was not an intelligent child. Why'd you turn it down? Don't want the district to know that you're old? 
Dragon Lad isn't that old. The year the system was published popped up on the stricter screen. Okay, it's kind of old. The moment the menu screen music began playing, it was like being slingshotted back to their childhood. The feeling of his mom's rug, his processed snack at the ready, and the sheer excitement to be home from school and free to waste away the evening. Without missing a beat, both of them started to sing along with the catchy theme song. Mishka burst out laughing. Are you seeing these graphics? The graphics weren't bad for their time, but the game looked like a potato compared to the virtual virtual reality games on the market nowadays. I love it. We have to start a new game. There's no other way. As the opening scene played, the two of them quoted along almost perfectly. Man, I remember us restarting the game constantly just to watch that scene again. Looking it up online wasn't the same. We had to watch it in-game. Oh, shit. It's starting. The combat tutorial was in full swing, and Sasha had barely managed to dodge an enemy attack. You have to hit both buttons. Mishka leaned over, pointing to the corner of the screen where helpful tips kept popping up. I know. Sasha fumbled with the controls and managed to pull off the attack, but was soon struggling once again. Come on, I haven't even gotten to the actual level yet. That's because you're rushing and not reading. It's literally telling you what to do. You know what, Mishka? No backseat gaming. Mishka laughed in amazement at how bad his friend was at this, and they only just started. Stop backseat ga- Oh my god. I'm literally Sasha. It's not even funny. Wow, I feel ashamed of myself. Allow me to drink some some lemonade so that I feel better. Yeah. Stop backseat gaming. This is harder than it looks. Old games are so hard. Oh my god, the camera in Spyro drives me insane. It's just like, if you ever wanted to be strapped onto a roller coaster... And you just, a really rickety, like, old roller coaster, right? And you're barely in there. Like, in fact, it's just a refurbished, like, car seatbelt. That's what it feels like to play Spyro. <laughs> that camera, man, it's insane. It's got a mind of its own. Sasha wasn't upset, though. It was too funny. <laughs> Imagine how much harder it would be if you were high. I mean, that's not an impossible theory to test. Sasha shot Mishka, a knowing side eye. But if you do, use the Red Bull, because the blue one's cracked. I was just joking, but you were on board so fast. It is literally, I was just like, I don't remember the camera being this bad, but playing the remastered version, I'm like, I'm like wobbling. This is how it feels to play Spyro. <laughs> just like, you get whiplash, you get nauseous, you throw up, but you keep going, because that's how you play Spyro. Mishka snorted as he stood up from the small sofa and headed to the kitchen where he knew Sasha kept his stash. Wasn't this jar full the last time I was here? How did you smoke that much? Gloved hands uncapped the jar and began loading up the Red Bull sitting on the counter. I have anxiety, no thanks to you. Green eyes were fixed intently on the screen. Ah, damn it, this jump is hard. Mishka shuffled back to where his friend sat rigidly on the couch, clearly struggling. Here. Mishka, Sasha glanced at Mishka's offered hand and saw the glass bowl was loaded. Light it for me. Just pause the game. You can't multitask. Watch me. Mishka sighed, shaking his head slightly before lifting the bowl to Sasha's face and lighting its contents with his free hand. How's the view? Mishka smirked at him as Sasha took a hit, both in and out of the game. It took all of ten seconds for the intense scent to fill the small studio apartment. After holding it in for as long as he could, Sasha finally exhaled. The view sucked. You were blocking only half of my face. Maybe you should just admit you suck at this game. You suck at this game. Mishka laughed before bringing Sasha's bowl to his own lips. He plopped back down. Down on the couch. I almost want to let you try so that you can see how hard it is and I can laugh at you instead. No, no, man. Weed makes me focused. I'll school you. With a deep inhale, Sasha pulls past, Mishka passed the bowl back to his friend. His eyes squinted a little through the smoke that seeped from his mouth. Sasha traded with Mishka, offering him the controller. It seemed much smaller in his hands than Sasha remembered. Without missing a beat, Mishka took the controller and began pressing as many buttons as he could. A few seconds later, oh no, Mr. Kiwi. Oh no, he's awake. Oh no. Okay. A few seconds later, a brief you died message flashed across the screen. That doesn't count. You were mid-jump when you handed it to me. I'm not feeling very schooled right now. Sasha took another hit after shooting down Mishka's excuse. All right, all right. Started back at the checkpoint. But as far as he tried to focus on, hard as he tried to focus on the screen in front of him, Mishka still struggled to jump over a large cliff. He frowned in irritation. Hold up. How do you glide again? Sasha was just silently shaking at this point. Face turned away from his friend as he tried to hold it in. Mr. Kiwi, hold on. My child is upset that I am paying attention to the game and not him. I have to put him on my lap. I apologize. Sit 
and be a good boy. Thank you. Okay. Tell me, despite his tone, Mishka grinned and couldn't contain the laughter that bubbled out of him. Why is this so hard? It's a game for children. Sounds like you. You need baby hands. Baby hands? What does that even mean? Yeah, these buttons were made for baby thumbs. Sasha could barely finish a sentence without wheezing. Yeah, he's he's a little cutie. He's a little evil. Mr. Wee here, Mr. Kiwi Wee, he had to go to the vet. You did. You had to go to the vet and you were a very brave boy. He had to um he had like some kind of allergic reaction to something. So I had to take him to the vet and they had to do a blood test on him. He's totally fine. Perfect bill of health. But he's had a little bit of a long week. And he's also super needy. The difficulty level on that older yeah. Yeah. True. Sasha could barely finish his sentence. No, stop. Okay, I guess I'm just going to have to hold you like this. Sasha could barely finish his sentence without wheezing. Okay, so what if I did this? Mishka set the controller onto his knee and promptedly switched to using just his index fingers on the button bed. Okay, you gotta go. You gotta go sit. Okay. I'm just going to go set him down. I'm just going to put him down for his nap. Okay. He very well might get up, but I'm just going to set him on his little bed to the corner and hope that he does not get up. So Mishka set the controller onto his knee and promptly switched using just his index fingers on the button pad. The controller shifted on his leg, threatening to fall at any second. If you break it, you have to buy me a new one. A new one? I probably have to go on a national treasure hunt just to find one. Yeah, I wonder how much they're worth now. Probably nothing. These games are already ported and they brick this console. Seemingly getting the hang of things. Actually, you'd be surprised. Some things are not ported. Like, there are certain editions of the Nintendo 64 that I think are just super, super, super expensive. Oh no, he's back. He won't go to take a nap. Seemingly again, Mishka began progressively quick, progressing quickly through the level, collecting items and blowing fire at enemies. Hey, got any snacks? I'm starving. I don't know. You'll have to go check. While playing Dragonland, master level multitasking. I think you gotta leave, Mr. Kiwi. Oh, yep. You definitely gotta leave when you're chewing on them light strings. Come here, sweetie. Come on. Let's Okay, I'm gonna escort you from the room. Okay, now he's decided that he's gonna. Okay, um, this is his new thing that he does where he takes my chair and refuses to let me have it. So thank you, Kiwi. I really appreciate it. Um, I guess this is it. This is the stream. Uh, this is. He thinks he's won. I refuse to let him win. Sasha chuckled, feeling all lightheaded from the smoke. His earlier stress had almost completely drifted away. You're the master multitasker, not me. Get me a snack. Didn't you say that I was horrible at multitasking? Retort aside, Sasha still eased painstakingly off the sofa. Gravity, strong. I might not make it to the kitchen. Oh yeah, I heard the turn up the gravity did it. Ah, oh, crap. Mishka's focus turned entirely to the screen in front of him. He leaned forward off the edge of the couch and squinted at the enemies he was rushing to defeat. Oh my god, why are there so many of them? Is that the sound of you being really bad at this game? Sasha now in the kitchen attempted to open the fridge. He laughed at himself as he kept failing to grab the handle. Fridge said no snacks, sorry. Well, tell the fridge I said yes snacks. Hurry back, they're gonna kill me. Mishka laughed as even more enemies swarmed in and began overwhelming a small dragon avatar. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Throw snacks at them? Just throw snacks at the screen? Yes, just throw a handful of peanuts at them. Mishka snickered at himself at the thought. But no, seriously, come help me. Become the dragon lad yourself. He laughed again and quickly double jumped, gliding about the enemies he didn't want to fight just yet. Sasha rolled his eyes and shook his head, amused. He finally managed to open the fridge and began to search its contents with lidded eyes, hoping to find something appetizing. No dice. Well, chips it is then. He shut the door and grabbed a half empty bag of flavored tortilla chips off the counter. Are you back yet? Did you just ask if I was back yet? I'm like within two meters at all times. This room isn't even that big. 
Sasha made his way back to the sofa, making sure to plop down hard enough to mesh Mishka up. <laughs> hey! Irritated by his friend's attempted at sabotage, Mishka swiped the bag of chips out of his Sasha's hands and replaced it with the controller. <laughs> Your problem now. Fight them, dragon lad. No! The moment Sasha had the controller, his little avatar was surrounded by enemies. I, I can't kill them with these shitty moves. Where's all the upgrades? Mishka chuckled quietly. His body slumped loosely against the armrest, drowsiness had started to set in, and he could feel his eyelids growing heavy. You can always use cheat codes. He stretched out and wiggled his legs underneath Sasha, Sasha trying to get more comfortable on the small couch. What is the first cheat code that you guys remember using? Because for me, I only ever remember using cheat codes for, like, The Sims. I remember, like, the whole Motherload cheat and Rosebud were so game-changer game changer because before then i had never used cheats in my life i was just bad and accepted that i was going to be bad cheating is for cheaters as he spoke sasha pulled out his phone to search for dragon like cheat codes these are all so long there's no way i'm gonna remember one long enough to unlock it up left down right circle circle something about a cootie shot <laughs> his tone was getting <laughs> gradually lower or whatever a small chuckle need for speed oh need for speed that one uh, I think that we had need... Is that Need for Speed Carbon? Or whatever that was? Yeah, Motherload. Motherload. Yeah. Um, if you know the Konami code, but I forget what the Konami code was good for. I want to say that the Konami code was useful for multiple games, but I can't remember which ones. That was like one of the ones that I heard about, but I never knew when it was appropriate to use. A small chuckle came from the armrest. Useless. Sasha checked the time on his phone. Is it seriously that late? He locked the device before staring blankly at the retry screen on the TV. Maybe we can just figure it out tomorrow. My brain is too smooth for this right now. I like your smooth brain. Good, because that's all you're getting. Sasha tiredly reached for a chip and gave it a weak nibble. Fair enough. Very slowly, Mishka rolled to the edge of the couch and onto the floor. From there, he began crawling tediously towards Sasha's bed. I really hope that's what you look like sneaking down the alleyway to pick the lock on my door. Sasha stretched out his leg as far as he could toward the machine, hoping he could hit the power button with his toe. No, I can't reach the power button. Come back. Get longer legs. <laughs> Mishka. <laughs> These stupid stoners, I love them so much. Mishka pulled himself onto the bed and disappeared under the loose cover, shimming up against the wall. Okay, give me a minute. I'll reach it any second now. He was straining so hard that the words were barely coherent. Slowly, he slid off the couch and onto the hard floor. I know, they're really cute. Get longer legs. <laughs> gonna tell my friends that whenever they ask me to help them with something, I'm just gonna say, get longer limbs. Chloe, can you pass that? Why don't you have longer arms? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not that funny but i find that hilarious so annoying <laughs> okay made it not caring about their safe file he held the power button down with his toe until the screen went black okay finally sasha found the will to stand he looked at the chips to decide to leave them on the couch i'll probably need them anyway no point in going through the hassle of putting them away and pulling them out again Sasha yawned, grateful that his bed was only a few steps away from the sofa. After a small detour for the light switch, he stumbled his way into bed by the light that shone through his hot balcony slider. A sudden wave of another body sinking to the mattress jostled Mishka, and he turned around, shuffling until he was facing Sasha. Come here. His voice was hushed. Mmm. Sasha scooted close, closer to his friend beneath the blankets. How can you stand to wear jeans to bed? Are you telling me to take them off? Mm, Sasha, mm, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying no, right, gang? I'm not. Sasha's laugh was muffled. I'm telling you that you're weird. I'm more weird with pants than without. Got it. After a couple seconds and a few sounds of rustling beneath the colors, Sa Mishka threw his pants across the small room. Ta-da. Praise me. That was ridiculous, but also very impressive. Let's meet you with tea. Mishka slid an arm across Sasha's middle and pulled him close, feeling warm and content. Mishka's arm was a warm band across his stomach, and Sasha shifted slightly under the weight, getting comfortable. But for real, tight clothing is a hassle and I'll die on that hill. Might just boycott it. No skinny jeans in my apartment. My jeans aren't skinny jeans. Are they still banned? Mm-hmm. When Sasha closed his eyes, he felt the room start to spin. And while that would normally make him panic, right now it was just relaxing. His body felt almost weightless, held down by his friend's arm. It felt safe. 
I've never been stoned before. I have never taken any drugs, but there was one time that I got very, very drunk with a friend and we were lying in a pool and that's not a safe place to get drunk kiddos. So don't ever do that. Not that there are any kiddos watching this stream as this game is strictly for the 18 and up, strictly for 18 and up. But there was one time that we were, so we were out, we had been drinking, we drank like an entire bottle of margarita mixer, don't recommend that, um, and then another half bottle on top of that, also don't recommend that, um, but I remember floating in the pool, and I was at the level of when I had been drinking so much that I was super dizzy, but not nauseous, like if you've, if you have a high tolerance, you get to this point where you're like, I'm dizzy but I'm not nauseous. And it's this very nice sweet spot. Kiwi, I'm telling a story. But I was able to like float on my back in the pool and I was able to look up at the stars. And that night was just so clear that it felt like you were swimming in just like this entire galaxy. And it was a very cool feeling. But don't drink and don't do drugs, kids. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, Kiwi doesn't care. He was like, wow, this isn't fun when I can, like, not throw you off your game. He's just, he's fine with my knees hurting. <sighs> oh, a chocolate wine. I've had some chocolate wine before. That's some good stuff. Chocolate wine is really good. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think about, like, the strongest alcohol I've ever had. I can't think about it. I tend to just drink mixed drinks. Oh, my God, he left me alone. He got bored. Oh, my God. I think. I think he's probably going to get up on the counter. Um, my, my poor knees. My poor freaking knees. Noticing the lack of sarcastic commentary, Mishka lifted his head from the... Okay, Kiwi. I think it's time for you to leave the room, my love. You got to leave. You might cry a little bit, but that is something. I am willing to accept. Please go play. Please go play. I'll be done in a little bit. A little bit, kiwi -wee. Oh, I feel really bad for my cat because he seems very, very needy and attached to me. And most of the time, I love that about him. Other times I get concerned because if I'm, I'm like, if I ever have to spend any time outside of this house <laughs> for, for <laughs> any sort of reason, I'm worried <laughs> that he's going to like be not be well adjusted. Noticing the lack of sarcastic commentary, Mishka lifted his head from the pillow and looked over at his friend. When he realized Sasha had fallen asleep, his gaze softened. How he's able to fall asleep so fast baffles me. Leaning in, Mishka rested his head above Sasha's on the pillow. He curled his body closer, entangling the two of them into a comfortably familiar pose. Only a few minutes later, sleep claimed Mishka, too. Aw, I would have loved to see a CG for that, but that's just me being nitpicky. Um, that was a really cute scene. That was really sweet. It's going to be really hard for you to make me care about these other love interests. The soft crackle of wood burning into ash and ember filled the otherwise silent space of the dark lounge. This guy, I think that his route isn't in the game as of yet. I could be wrong. Um, there is one route that I think that they have to patch in later. So yeah. A slender man approached his superior. Who was seated in a sleek armchair with an almost bored expression as he looked down at his phone. Yeah, Ada. Ada is the one who they're patching in later, I'm pretty sure. Upon hearing the voice, the man lifted his dark eye gaze from his phone and stared at the agent standing before him. The dealer we sent out to retrieve the package never made it back. A thin smile spread across the man's lips. Of course, I knew Strex's little rat would get in the way. Because of the Titan security around the shop, only verified dealers have been able. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, I thought that his, his route was coming in the patch. Um, awesome. Only verified dealers have been able to get through. Fine, we'll use our mole then. Have him get the sample and send it to the warehouse. Do it before Pavel catches wind. I'll be sure to stretch the urgency to the others then. No, I have something more important for you to do, Ada. As the men spoke, he lifted a thin tablet from the side table nearby. The screen illuminated his face and filled once dark eyes with a pale blue light. Ada's gaze... Previously fixated near the other man's feet, lifted to regard his superior. A jolt of heat ran through him when their eyes met for a split second. Oh, 
oh, somebody, somebody's naughty and likes his boss. I want you to keep an eye on Dima's pet. We can't risk losing time if he wanders close. Look at, okay, guys, I'm just going to stop for a second here. Look at all the goddamn lines in these curtains. Look at the shading. Guys, I'm, I'm a sucker for good shading. This is nice. Look at this. Look at how much texture that they put into this. Look at the look at the mise en scene. Look at how this comes together. Appreciate it, guys. Look at that. That's beautiful. I love how the shadows have this very like water brushed kind of watercolor look to them. I, I'm not sure if it is. Um, I'm not sure what is used to make the illustrations, but it's really pretty super pretty and yeah wow i can look at that for hours okay i want you to keep an eye on dima's pet we can't risk losing time if he wanders too close and if he does it is voice was quieter now he took a few daring closer steps a few daring steps closer now within arm's reach of his superior the man gently took ada's hand in his and met no resistance <laughs> thank you I also love the textures here. I'm not sure if they came up with their own textures here for the pillows, but it definitely looks, this looks like, um, I, I it definitely looks like super realistic. I just kind of want to feel these pillows. Like I know that this is like a corduroy texture. Um, it's really nice. Wow. That's so nice. I would love to see how they did those. There's so many different like little things that go into making, um, artwork and textures for games and it's just ridiculous like the level of detail like they have to show that this um like this pillow here like how it kind of just like folds over that little nice wrinkle that's just such a nice touch that probably took them extra time though so you gotta you gotta appreciate all the little things with the details on art. The man gently took Ada's hand in his and met no resistance. Ada's fingers were relaxed and compliant. Without warning, the man forcefully pulled Ada into his lap. Oh no, he kind of hot though too. Oh no, he's kind of hot. Oh my god. Somebody grabs my hair like that. They better be marrying me. All I'm saying. His words were so close. His words were so close. His warm breath brushed softly against Ada's neck. Anything for you. Oh, no, Ada, don't say that. Oh, no. <laughs> Something tells me this man is going to be dead by the end of this game. The long, eerie hallway that housed Sasha's front door did well to hide just what time of day it was. Though it looked the same as the previous night, it was now late afternoon when the two finally emerged from the small studio apartment. They managed to sleep most of the day away, no thanks to the lack of natural daylight in the apartment. Sasha shut and locked his front door behind him, glaring at Mishka as he jiggled the handle to double-check its security. Mishka couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> Listen, at least it didn't break the lock. It's fine. Don't give me a lot of look. Sasha rolled his eyes before pocketing his keys. After taking a few steps toward the stairs, Sasha's stomach rumbled loudly. Dude, I'm starving. Mishka quickly followed after his friend. That's what we get for waking up this late. Ugh, maybe there's a hot dog place along the way. Funny how you just invite yourself to my job. Hey, it's my day off. I've got nothing better to do. Do you ever? Mishka gasped dramatically and pretended to clutch his pearls as they went down the stairwell and out into the street. I still think we should stop for hot dogs. No complaints here. The sounds of buses stopping loudly by the curb, distant car horns, the wind tearing between between tall buildings, they all washed over him. Sure, it was loud, but every sound reminded Sasha that he was never truly alone out here. It was all so familiar. So where's this drop anyway? Sasha pulled his phone from his jacket pocket, quickly scrolling through his messages. He wants to meet over at Jukebox, which is at least an hour of public transit. Sasha typed a quick, on my way to tear him before pocketing his phone. Jukebox, that's a uh, Strexa Tower, yeah? A hint of unease had crept into Mishka's tone. Yeah, I'm almost never over that way. It feels too expen expensive. Yeah, I know. Like, please just feed this man. Watch us, like, pass. Watch us go to meet the person at the drop and then pass out because we're so hungry. Watch that happen. I walked around there once, you know, to look at the shops and found some really nice shoes. I thought I'd have to take, can we also just take a moment to appreciate how they draw teeth? This is so cute. This is insanely cute. This is adorable. 
this 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 is worthy of an Oscar for the arts. I don't even know what that would be. I don't even know. Put this in the Louvre. I love how we draw teeth here. I thought I'd have to take out a mortgage on those things. I put them down so fast. Feels like they charge you for breathing their air, huh? Guess I'll hold my breath. Don't die. Right, so the tower. Hope you don't plan on us walking. Yeah, that's a bit much for me. Moving from the couch to your kitchen is a bit much for you. Okay, smart ass. Walking is out of the question. Let's... Oh my god. Okay, I'm really anxious. The bus is... Both are smelly. Um, does it make a difference? Okay, the, the, the bus, the train, the bus, the train, the bus. It's, it's, okay. So it's easier, I think, to be separated from your friends at a train station than it is at a bus. And I get the feeling that something is going to come along to try and separate us. So I am going to opt to take the bus because it's easier to stick together. It's easier than the subway. Oh, sure. Yeah, this bus stop isn't too far from here anyway. Sounds like a win to me. The pair walked down the side street, headed in the direction of the bus stop. Sasha was still hungry, and the scent of all the small hole-in-the-wall restaurants they passed certainly wasn't helping. My memory could be faulty, but I think someone mentioned something about buying me a hot dog. It's definitely your memory, but because I'm such a nice guy, I'll buy you a hot dog. Where is that little hot dog stand anyway? It's usually on this corner. As they approached the corner of a somewhat busy intersection, Mishka turned peered around. Confusion spreading over his features. Oh no, hot dog guy isn't here today. What if he found greener pastures and abandoned us? I'm not sure I could cope with that news. When he turned back to Mishka, Sasha's brows were tilted in mock distress. Mishka laughed, shaking his head gently. <laughs> he loves us, he wouldn't dare. Another quick peek around and Mishka pointed across the street some ways into a small parking lot. There he is. A midweek miracle. I'll race you there. First one has to buy the hot dogs. Sasha's pace stayed the same while Mishka didn't even entertain the thought of the race. Can't beat you, the fastest runner around. Sarcasm practically dripped from his voice as they crossed the street and closed in on the hot dog guy. Mishka dug in his pocket and pulled out his C card. We'll take two hot dogs with the uh, mustard, please. Two for me? How thoughtful of you. The aroma wafting from the small street cart made Sasha's stomach growl more than ever as he watched hot dog guy assemble his food. Here you go, boys. With a chipper tune in the man's voice, he held up the food and scanned Mishka's card. Enjoy the hot dogs. Thanks. Better scarf that down, Sasha. They won't let us have those on the bus. He teased his friend while he started walking again. Challenge accepted. After grabbing their food, the two of them headed towards their destination. Near the bus stop, a man wearing far too many layers for the season leaned quietly against the building. When he saw Sasha and Mishka approaching, he pushed off the wall and shuffled over to them. Mishka tossed his half eaten hot dog into the trash bin nearby. Boy, it's a hot dog. Shove that down your throat. Shove it down your throat. Just eat it. I can't believe you would throw half of a hot dog. Of a perfectly good hot dog, sir. I'm really upset. That's, that is that is that is more upsetting than any violence that you could put in this game. A man throwing out a perfectly good half-eaten hot dog. Is the bus even here yet? You just decided you were... That is so upsetting. You paid money for that. No, do not come into my chat telling me hot dogs are gross. <laughs> they paid money for the hot dog. Bro, there is nothing sadder than throwing out food that you bought. Oh my gosh, is there anything sadder? Oh, Sasha. The closer the stranger got, the more tense Mishka began to feel. His movements slowed and became more cautious. Do you know this guy, Sasha? Yeah, he's a regular of mine. Sasha's expression shifted into something a bit more welcoming as he greeted the familiar client. Mishka's tension subsided, if only little. He kept a watchful eye out regardless. Regular or not, there was little trust in these streets. Hey man, nice to see you out in daylight for once. <laughs> I know, right? You're dressed pretty warm for the weather, aren't you hot? I'm always cold, damn shivers. Hey look, Sasha, I'm really glad I caught you. <laughs> How are you now? He crumpled the empty hot dog tray in his hands and tossed it into the nearest recycling bin. Clap for Sasha. Clap for Sasha for finishing his hot dog, honestly. As if I didn't just see you last week. <laughs> You're really funny, you know that? <laughs> hey, anyway, uh, I was thinking of something. The man wiped at his nose with his palm of fall, turning around to glance behind them. Sasha took a deep breath. He's seen this routine before. Okay. Well, you know how it is, right? He laughed, but it was short-lived. One hand moved to scratch at his arm underneath a few layers of clothing. I just need like half a half a gram. That's all I need. That new stuff you got, some of that. 
half a gram is going to cost you. You got that much on you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm trying to save up for my C card. Huh, the paperwork is taking a long time, you know? I can't take the bus or anything because they will not be on. So so I don't have any of that yet, but you know I'll get it soon. I'll, I'll get it back to you soon, you know? No, man, sorry. I can't take IOUs. You know that. I've got mouths to feed. Mine. Just this one time, man. Just this one time. It's just taking all my income to just get this card, and I only need half a gram. The man became more agitated. I'm sorry, but it can't. Sasha shrugged as he re reiterated his refusal. Sasha, come on. Please, man. This withdrawal is ferocious. You've got to understand. The man attempted a smile. He was clearly growing more agitated by the moment. He glanced over his shoulder a second time. He said no. Back off. Mishka, ease up. His brows furrowed at the sudden intensity. All right, all right. Damn, I, I don't want any trouble. I, I know, like, Mishka sliding in close. <laughs> Mishka just very casually being like, touch. The man backed up a bit, shaking his head in disappointment. Before another word was said, their bus began pulling up to the curb. Mishka reached into his pocket and pulled out a business card. He held a small piece of paper over to the regular, letting go when the other man grabbed it. Here, call this number. They'll help you get your card. Good luck. Thanks. Mishka turned and walked away, following Sasha toward the bus. The doors opened as they approached. Sasha stepped up to the bus, pulling out a C card to scan on the way in. The light flashed green, successfully charging him. He sighed in relief. Even though Sasha knew he had enough money to get on, there was always that small fear it would decline and he would have to walk shamefully back off the bus. That wasn't something Mishka had to worry about, however. The minute he stepped onto the bus after Sasha and held up his card, the bus driver nodded at him and let him through. No scanning required. Free rides are the best kind. <laughs> Where do you want to sit? On my lap? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ignore me. Sasha rolled his eyes as he made his way down the aisle. Yeah, well, your card's weird like you. Sasha slipped into his seat with Mishka close on his heels. Give me your headphones. You have to listen to this. He, it's, it's green day. He leaned back in his seat, crossing one leg over the other while he scanned his phone for a particular song. Do you have the time to listen to me when... Sasha shifted around and patted his pockets until he found the small case. He popped out the cordless earbuds and offered one to Mishka before securing his own. Things are spotty, so if you move too far, they'll disconnect. Right, so get as close as I can without making it weird in public. Got it. He took the offered pot and placed it into his ear, placing close. Oh, hello. Hi. I've been making joke. I... Hello. Welcome. <laughs> I would also drink a Slurpee from underneath the bus seat if I was in the mood, but that's just me. He took the offered pot and placed it into his ear, bending close before pressing play. The two sat close together for the remainder of the ride. Luckily, the tower wasn't that far away now. It wouldn't take too long for them to arrive. Okay, so so taking the bus was fine? Question mark? I, I don't know. I don't know. The difference between the district and the one that they had left just felt like night and day. The trees planted evenly along the road were well manicured. Okay, so this is kind of cool because this sort of looks like little paper cutouts and like kind of like dioramas. I don't know why it reminds me of a diorama. It just kind of does. No trash could be found. Maybe it's just kind of like the contrast between like this kind of rendered piece of artwork and like this very bright pop poppy like foliage and then the, the 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 black the black and white drawings of people which look like cutouts that's interesting no trash could be found on the crackless sidewalks and water features adorned walkways and expensive looking skyscraper lobbies is it just me or is the air different here be careful they'll charge us for talking too much grinning slightly mishka shoved his hands deep into his pockets and trailed after his friend i'm always amazed to see how many people find shop find time to shop in the middle of a work day okay but for real can we talk about that can we talk about how there's so many people in this world that i feel like they have time to go like to get lunch and i feel like if i was two minutes late getting back from lunch at my job they would be very upset not that I work a normal schedule. Strexa Tower was tall enough to spot almost anywhere in the city, so it felt a little intimidating standing under it now. The first floor was filled with various types of open-air shops that anyone could pass through, and there were a hell of a lot of them. Sasha, look at this. Without much of a warning, Mi Mishka veered off and crouched down beside a small metal box outside an expensive-looking boutique. I think it's an umbrella wrapping thing. He leaned over the box and looked down into the narrow hole at the top. I dare you to put your hand in there. And what, steal an umbrella bag? Silly curiously walked over and looked down into it. Wish I had an umbrella on me so I could bag it. 
Maybe it's part of their marketing ploy. Get you to buy an umbrella just to try this thing. <laughs> Rich people would absolutely buy an umbrella when it's 20 degrees Celsius and clear skies outside. Sasha checked his phone to reread the text he received the previous night. Why'd this guy want to meet here anyway? Is this really on your route? Sasha just shrugged. Honestly, the further from my apartment, the better. His gaze darted between the hanging signs of the nearby shops in hopes of finding jukebox. Actually, that makes sense. So who are we looking for? Skeezy guy, probably late 20s, old outdated pair of sneakers. He looks like Seth Rogen. I'm sorry. Sorry, Seth Rogen. You don't look like that anymore. But I've been watching a lot of Jetta Hapital movies, and it's really weird to see how different Seth Rogen is, like, physically in terms of, like, how he carried himself from, like, the 2007 movies that he used to do. And 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 now it's, it's a trip. Um... Speaking of which, like, Knocked Up doesn't make sense as a movie, but that's a story for another time. But that is indeed a story for another time. This is 40, if you haven't seen it, though. That is my favorite. This is 40 is really funny. Highly recommend. Taryn, never met him before, so probably a new buyer. Never met him, and you weren't going to ask me to come. Wow, I see. They wouldn't meet at Jukebox. My bank account's at higher risk than my safety. Not far away from them, a man who fit Mishka's earlier description gazed up from his phone, peered around, then looked back down. A few moments later, the man lifted his head and looked around again. Yeah, so is that him? Mishka motioned with his head, his hands sliding instinctively into his pockets where his knives were. Probably. So the two of them approached the stranger. Oh, oh. Okay, this man looks like he's ready to go to spring break. Why does this man look like he wants to be, want to be Matthew Lillard? Why am I getting Matthew Lillard vibes? I, I'm sorry, Matthew Lillard. The man turned and squinted at Sasha. With a hearty laugh, he flipped his phone around and shoved it into his pants pocket. I'm going to give him a Matthew Lillard voice. Hey, man, I thought you'd be taller. His teeth flashed in a smile. <laughs> anyway, what's up? Other than bringing me my order. <laughs> or wait, are you Sasha or you? He pointed toward Mishka. That's not a, that's, that's my best Matthew Lillard impression. Nobody, nobody, nobody <laughs> can't answer that. Oh, unfortunately, yeah. You guys aren't going to be able to see Matthew Lillard. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can move him. Um, I will move. Okay. Can you guys now see Matthew Lillard? This is Matthew. <laughs> He's not Matthew Lillard. I'm just getting Matthew Lillard vibes from his face, but I'm going to move my camera back now. This is just to let you guys see. I'll try and like, I can, I can, that's not going to help much. Okay. Anyways, we're back at it. Yep. That's him. Probably never buys his own shit. I hate this. Shifting onto customer service mode, Sasha's tone changed into something more confident. I'm travel sized, or would you rather I be on everybody's radar? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> hey, man, that just means you can squeeze into small spaces, right? With this chortle, he dug into his pocket and started pulling out wads of cash, flipping through them only after he licked his thumb first. Oh, my God, I hate it when people do that. Oh, did you guys. Did you guys ever have like story time with your teacher in like elementary school and they like licked the freaking page every time they turned it? I would sit there as a child and I would be mortified. I'd be like, I'm never touching this book because you've licked every single page, Miss Patterson. I hope she's doing well. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Taryn paused to look up at Mishka for a moment and went back to his counting. So they're like, what? Uh, 200 for a gram? <laughs> Didn't you say you wanted to meet a jukebox? It's close enough. Sasha interjected, watching the stack of money this man pulled out in broad daylight. Do you not have payo or a coin linked to your C card? I also take crypto. The thought of carrying cash around made him nervous. <laughs> no, cutie, I don't like to be traced. So how much is it? That new NS shit is expensive, isn't it? $14,000. 200 if you're paying US dollars. It's my last batch for a reason. That's what Alexi mentioned. I'm game. I'm game. Does that come with dinner with you too? The f I thought he meant to utter the words under his breath. Mishka's voice rose sharply. That'll cost you at least three times as much. Sasha wouldn't consider this guy's type, but he didn't mind his ego being stroked. Oh, so you're fancy fancy, huh? Well, lucky for you, I'm loaded. All kinds of loaded. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm sorry. Um, I'm all right. That was that was a really good one. That setup was perfect. I appreciate that one. I don't think you could afford my appetite. Sasha, what the? F Just tearing grin to Sasha, still flipping through the bundle of cash. All right, so what? $200 for the bag and $800 for you? I ain't talking about dinner, you know. Sasha, is this something that you do, sir? Are you going to be safe? I don't know if I trust Beach Boy Matthew Lillard here. Yeah, Mish Mishka's just like sitting sitting back and he's like, what the hell is even happening? What What is happening? His tongue stuck out playfully between his teeth. Jaw creaking with how hard he was clenching his teeth, Mishka balled his hands into fists. His nails bit sharply into his palms, and every muscle in his body was rigid. Sasha pulled out a small cellophane bag with a violet emblem from inside his jacket. Do you dote on all your dealers this way? The drug was held lightly between his fingers so he could off the product and take payment at the same time. Just the cute ones. He smirked and slid the wad of cash into Sasha's hand, taking the baggie as well. With his free hand, Taryn grabbed Sasha's forearm and pulled him closer. And you're pretty cute. Get back. Why are you causing a scene? Why are you causing a scene? Why are we? This is a drug dealer. Why are you causing a scene? Oh my God, Mishka. Mishka, I let you sleep in my bed. I let you smoke my weed. I let you play my video games. I let you break into my apartment. I let you do a lot of things to me, Mishka. And you are ruining my job. Upset. Mishka stepped forward, pushing his arm between the other two and roughly shoveling Karen away from Sasha. What the, what, what the, what the, sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't, I won't say the F-bomb on, on stream. I, I cannot. Taryn growled, stumbling back a little. Temper igniting like a spark, he put both hands on Mishka's chest and shoved him back. Who you think you are? Hey, hey, you need to chill out. Sasha glanced around anxiously, aware that they were making <laughs> Mishka is in love. Oh my god. I know, but like, dude, don't do that. Okay, knowing where they, that they were making a scene. Like, you'll know who I'm in, am in a second, shithead. The scowl Misha wore, Mishka wore intensified, and Sasha's voice fueled the adrenaline coursing through him. Mishka, we're not doing this right now. The uproar had already gained the attention of a few onlookers, all of them slowing down to better see the fight. Huh, what's going on over there? An officer on patrol started to make his way toward them, craning his neck and an attending. Yeah, no shit. Oh my god. Sasha felt his stomach flip as the cop approached. This had never happened before. He was usually really good at keeping a low profile. God damn it. Sasha, we should bail. All right, I'm going to have to ask you all to calm down. Hey, what do you have there in your hand? Seeing that the officer was still some distance away, Taryn quickly pocketed the drug that had been spotted and took off. He disappeared in a labyrinth of shops and side streets around the tower. Such felt his throat tighten and his heartbeat thundered in his ears. We can't afford this. We have to run. We don't have money for a bribe. Go. Go. Go, homie. I'm going to trust Mishka. I really don't think I should have trusted Mishka now. Um, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it and I'm going to live to regret it. And I won't live to regret it. <laughs> Times are changing and I'm getting old. Anybody gonna hold me accountable? Mishka urgently grabbed his friend's jacket and shoved him forward. Shaken from his days, Sasha bolted. Oh, take a minute. It's really good. Oh, I like this. Oh, I love that music. He didn't trust himself to look back when he heard the cop give chase. Hey, I cannot run this guy. Yes, you can, bitch. Suck it up. Suck it up. Run fast. Chill your inner Sonic. Sasha huffed as he sharply turned the corner and tried to keep up with Mishka. Doesn't matter. Just keep running. Mishka checked over his shoulder and suddenly grabbed Sasha's wrist, tugging him to the left. Where are we going? They didn't get a good look at us, right? We don't stand out. You have, you have green hair, sweet pea. And your friend has red hair. What do you think? I think you're very easy to pick out of a crowd. He walks up in here and he's like... I'm low profile, he says with his beautiful dyed hair. Are you seriously out of breath already? Mishka couldn't help himself. Easy for you to see. You're like a giraffe. Mishka quickly assessed their options. The footsteps of the cop in pursuit grew louder. Up ahead was an alleyway that looked promising, but it was pretty dark down there despite the sun setting in the sky. The North Market was well lit and populated, but cluttered with the obstacles that could only cause problems for Sasha. 
Okay, we're gonna go through the alley. I hope you can jump some fences, son. The alley was their best bet. Still pulling Sasha along. Mishka ran straight ahead towards the opening. Come on, this way. Their heavy footsteps felt closer as a sound bounced off concrete and brick. For the briefest moment, Sasha felt a sense of relief. The police officer hadn't followed them. Not to jinx us, but I think we might get lucky. Oh my god, are we just gonna walk right into the cop? That He was completely winded and had to start to slow down a bit, adrenaline alone keeping him moving. You can't slow down now. Come on. I hate this. Why did you have to make a scene? When the two of them ran around the corner, Mishka came to a hard stop. Everything slowed in that moment. Desperately, he tightened his grip on Sasha's wrist and yanked him back as his friend Kareem passed him, unable to stop his momentum. This sudden jerk spent a spike of pain radiating through Sasha's arm. Ow, what are you? Mishka wasn't listening. <laughs> Hello, cowboy daddy. He was staring at the two figures standing in the alleyway, clearly in deep conversation. One was brightly dressed with a wicked grain glinting from beneath the shadow of their hat. The other figure was stark contrast, dressed in all black. I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna... Rad. I'm sorry. A tense silence filled the alleyway when the pair noticed Sasha and Mishka. Abruptly, Mishka turned around and ran back the way that they just come, dragging Sasha behind him. Everything felt like a blur as the mysterious figures disappeared behind them. Despite the sound of the sirens growing louder, Mishka did not stop running. Now at the intersection of two large alleys, he whipped his head around to look for an exit. Stop! Put your hands up! <gasps> Mishka spun around, quickly eyeing the fire escapes above them for just a moment as if entertaining the thought. More officers came from the alley remaining alleyway openings, approaching with weapons drawn. This is a lot for a drug bust. This is a lot. God damn it. When they slowed down, Sasha finally suddenly felt like he'd be hit by a train. His face was flushed and hot, and his throat rasped painfully as he gasped for air. It had all been for nothing. He wasn't sure what was making his heart race more, the fact that they'd sprinted way beyond his capacity or knowing full well that they were about to get booked for this. Defeated, Mishka shook his head and lifted his arms up. Sasha weakly lifted his hands as best he could. Well, I failed. <laughs> the sound of metal doors closing echoed loudly, and the holding cell Sasha and Mishka found themselves in. Though it was clean and had a little barred window near the ceiling, it was a bit cramped. Luckily, sharing with strangers wasn't something they had to worry about. Alone in the cell, Sasha and Mishka sat quietly on a metal bench near the back. A baton suddenly struck the bars in front of them, jarring both from their thoughts. All right, give me your C cards. Come on, bring them over here. I don't have all day. When neither one of them moved to stand out, the officer hit the bars again, this time even louder than the last. Got a listening problem? I said, bring me your C cards. With a disgruntled noise and a slight eye roll, Mishka eased himself off the metal bench and dug into his pocket, searching for the card. Sasha wasn't far behind him, also looking in his pockets. Before Sasha could stand, Mishka held out his hand for his friend's C card. Once he had the cards, he approached the officer behind the bars. Here. He squeezed his hand between the bars and held the cards out to the officer. Took you long enough. The officer swiped both cards from Mishka's hand and turned to walk down the titled hall. Hey, we'll get those back, right? Yep, after we process and run your prints. Get, com get comfy, you'll be in here a while. Mishka gripped the bars at the cell door inside as the officer's footsteps faded down the hall. Ugh, my feet are killing me. Sasha lifted one leg over the other to better reach his sneakers. After messing with the laces, he removed his shoe and rubbed his feet with a frown. That was the worst. He probably couldn't remember the last time that he'd run all that much at once. Probably not since grade school. Mishka turned away from the bars and leaned back against them, watching Sasha. I commend you. That was a hard sprint. A hard sprint that could have been avoided. With an annoyed sigh, Mishka pushed off the bars and walked across the cell, carelessly flopping down beside his friend. It wouldn't hurt to, I don't know, try a treadmill once in a while. Being able to run from shit in this city is an asset. Sasha lifted his gaze from a swollen foot, less than amused. I can't do all the things you want me to do. I won't. Glad you can outrun the cops, but that wasn't on my agenda. I never said I wanted... <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have pushed you to do something you can't do. Mishka rode the back of his neck sheepishly, his gaze straying from Sasha to anything and everything else in the cell. Sasha looked away. Sasha? What was that back in the alley? Oh, you mean when I pulled your arm? Sorry. Yeah, but why? You were freaked out all of a sudden. And what was that about? I wasn't freaked out. Why would you think that? You almost pulled my arm out of its socket. I call that freaked out. Was it the two people we saw? There's nothing freaky about two people in the alley, Sasha. It's nothing. <laughs> exactly. So then why did you freak out? I didn't freak out. Abruptly, a baton struck the cell bars again, drawing the two from their argument. Mishka jumped and turned sharply to face the officer. Stop freaking out in there. Oh my god. All right, we ran your cards. You each get a phone call, and you, Pinky, you've got a lot of explaining to do. Do you know how many knives we pulled off of you? 
Sasha watched as Mishka started for the door and followed the cop out of the holding cell. He rubbed his foot again, turning his head down toward his shoe with a sigh. Together, Mishka rounded the corner behind the officer. All right, you've got ten minutes and one call. Make it a good one. Don't talk much, do you? Whatever. Phone's over there. Wipe it down when you're done. Never. Mishka approached the row of ancient-looking phone lines and proceeded to pick up the receiver. When he did a small projected screen, screen projected above the number pad. With practice at ease, he dialed the number and waited quietly. He watched as the screen flickered before faintly displaying a pixelated face. Oh, I don't know. It's me. I'm in jail. I need you to get us out. One moment. Mishka glanced up from the phone, sweeping his gaze over the people in the lobby. All right, I'm here. Why are you in jail? Doesn't matter. Can you just get us out? Us? Who's us? Is there someone else with you? Yeah, friend. We were caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Is your C-card not working? They should have let you out when they scanned the encryption. Do you really want to play 20 questions with me right now? I've got a limited time on this thing. And Sasha doesn't let have the same C-card as me. I'm not leaving him here. Just call him and bail us out. Sasha? Dima, seriously. Time limit. Okay, I'll call the station. But Mishka, this can't be a situation more than once. Sure, whatever. Saw Aiden and Ali when we were running from the cops. He was with Neo. I see. Anyway, thanks. Mishka. What? Be careful, please. If Ada's out, there's a reason. Stay close to our perimeter. Call Vadim if you need to. And please stop running from cops. Keep your head down. Yep. Bye. Bye. Mishka abruptly set the receiver back on the hook, his eyes closing with aggravation. The cop behind him eyed him like a hawk, occasionally glancing over Mishka's shoulder at the now relaxed screen on the landline. You done? Come on. Welcome, Rai. Welcome to the stream. Mishka complied and turned to follow the officer back down the hall and toward the holding cell. Not a minute had passed before the sound of static blared from the officer's walkie-talkie. Hey, Kimmerk, this is Smith. Over. Hey, Smith, go ahead. Over. Those two in holding cell D4, they're free to go. Over. What? All right, affirmative. Over and out. After a quick tone from the receiver, the signal ended. With an exasperated sigh, the cop turned to Mishka with a look of disdain. Friends in high places won't always be able to bail you out, punk. I'll need my phone and, uh... All eight of my knives back. Your stuff's on the counter there. I'll go get your friend. Mishka went to collect his confiscated things and silently pocketed them one by one. He slid his phone into his back pocket and waited for Sasha. They're letting us go? Just like that? Yep. How? Don't worry about it. Grab your phone. We'll call a ride share to take us back. I want to get out of here. Sasha watched his hands as his fingers fumbled at the cuff of his jacket. Actually, he called Ari to come pick me up. Guess they won't be late waiting long now. Mishka paused for a second and brought his fingers up to scratch at his jaw. His shoulders heaved with a heavy sigh. Okay. Is everything all right? I was stuck in a holding cell for two hours with aching feet. Why wouldn't it be? Okay. Well, see you later, I guess. I kind of want to be left alone right now. Sasha. Oh, she cute, though. Hi, girly. She really pretty. Okay. Sasha's thought was cut short by his familiar friend's voice. Without another word, Mishka turned and left. As Mishka left, Arisha, Arisha looked towards Sasha, their shoulders drooping with a heavy sigh. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, Arisha's non-binary. Okay, you uh, good to go, Sasha? Let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah, let's go. The sound of two car doors closing echoed in the dimly lit parking lot, parking garage, soon followed by the roar of the car's engine coming to life. I think that we're only going to go for about nine more minutes because my, my throat is really hurting. It's killing me. And no matter how much water I drink, it's not getting better. Also, I can hear my little cat. He's getting quite upset. Arisha clicked their seatbelt into place and glanced over at their friend, fingers tightening on the steering wheel. I already know what you're going to say. You know how tired I am of bailing you out of these facts between you two. Ooh. Do you know I'm missing my self-defense class to come pick you up? What even happened? It was just normal drop, and Mishka didn't like the guy. Some cops saw. That was it. Uh-huh, that was it. As if Mishka's jealous tendencies haven't gotten you into shit like this before. Arisha shook their heads slowly. Their manicured fingers loosened their grip on the steering wheel as the car turned out of the parking space. Somehow, Kiwi forced his way into the room. I don't know how that happened. He's learned how to open doors. He has ascended. Am I wrong? No. Look, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just worried you're wasting your energy on a dead end. I know. Does the water have to be over your head for you to realize that you're in too deep? You cannot get thrown in jail again. You're a dealer. How do you even get out? No one can afford bail in this city. I don't know. Mishka went to make his phone call, and after that, the cop came back and let us out. That's shady as hell, Sasha. What's worse is he wouldn't tell me how, and I did ask. He seems really choosy on what I should and should not know. That's Mishka, though. He's secretive. But not with me. 
Apparently he is from what you're telling me. Maybe they're right. Kiwi, you can come sit with me. You can you can come sit with me if you're gonna force your way into the friggin' room. No, you come sit with me. You come sit with me. You baby. He's not. Sasha looked out the window, watching the shops and streetlights fly by. The roads were almost empty at this time of night. Why do you put up with this? Why not just tell him this isn't working? Because it's clearly not. There is no this. We're not in a relationship. Oh, no? Could have fooled me and everyone else, man. We're not dating. So then what are y'all? Because whatever it is, it doesn't look good for where I'm standing. Are you friends with benefits? No. I don't know. Can we please... Oh, so he's admitting that there could have been no key. Come here, sweetie. Come here, sweetie. Kiwi. Kiwi. Come on, Puck. Come on. Come on. You're being a butthole. He's being a butt. He's six months old. It's not his fault. Sasha, there's all kinds of relationships out there. And babe, whether you like it or not, you're in one. I love you too, but you're being annoying. You're being annoying. You're so needy. I thought that you were going to be more independent once you reach your teenage years. And I don't think that's the case. Friends fight all the time. You got so pissed at me once we were fighting, building your bread frame. You didn't talk to me for a week. That was a bed frame, Sasha. This is jail. I just picked you up from jail. Fine. I'll add don't get arrested to my list of goals right next to not eating before bedtime. Yeah, well, at least think about what I said. I really don't like seeing you like this. Tires used to stop next to the curb beside Sasha's apartment complex. With the engine, thank you. <laughs> With the engine still running, I reached and put the vehicle in park. Almost immediately after the car stopped, Sasha pulled the door handle and stepped out. Uh-huh, thanks for picking me up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and if I miss another class with my hot instructor because of you, it'll be another week without talking. Call me later. Sasha couldn't help but small smile swarming as he rolled his eyes and shut the door. Yeah, but like Mishka, Mishka, Mishka also is probably an assassin or like a serial killer. He's got all these knives on him for no reason. And I don't know. I, I feel like if your friend is a drug dealer and you're going to go with him on his drug dealers, like, don't mess up his drug deal. Like, that's just me. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't, I genuinely wouldn't know. I'm playing this game so that I can know. So that I can learn. Okay. He watched the little hashback pull away from the curb and rumble down the street. So then what are y'all? Sasha sighed before heading into his apartment building. So... If he answered, I don't know, to the question, are you guys friends with benefits, does that mean that they have occasionally hooked up in the past? Suspicious. I'm so hungry. You gotta stop waking up so late. With a slow yawn, Sasha headed down the sidewalk and looked for a place to grab something to eat. He passed by quite a few good restaurants, but none of them were exactly what he was craving. The craving itself was hard to pin down, though. What do I even want to eat? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Good morning, Sunshine. I've got a pickup for you. Okay, when? 13 today. It's at the flower shop. It's 13 right now. Sure is. Get moving. What do I do with it? Sell it? You'll drop it off at Club Trinity later tonight. I'll be there. See you then. What a tool. So much for grabbing something to eat first. Sasha pocketed his phone inside deeply, his stomach rumbling. He could see the shop already. The sheer number of potted plants and hanging baskets of flowers clustered on the storefront were a dead giveaway. At least it smelled nice. Is that purple sports car in this part of town? I love it. Parked in front of the small inner city flower car was a sleek car that cost an easy quarter million. That is a sexy car. It stuck out like a sore thumb in the mostly vacant parking spaces in front of the building. Sasha glanced at the car as he walked by, though the windows were too tinted to see who was inside. He pushed open the door to the flower shop and it gave a soft, soft jingle as he entered. Rows and rows of assorted plants lined the walls, filling the air with the fresh scent of countless flowers. The fragrance was strong, but overall nice, and Sasha breathed it in appreciatively. He paused at the entrance for a moment before approaching the cashier. Oh, shoot! I forgot to mop the back. It should be... Sasha! Hey! Hey, Siren. We're gonna double shift? Yep, my rent says I can't work under 12 hours a day. I'm joking, but not really. I hear that. My balance is looking pretty sad right now. Yeah... Anyway, are you here to help me stock the shop, please? Nope, sorry. I'm just picking up a shipment today. It would have been filled within the last hour or so, I think, under Alexi. Ha, huh, man, I could have really used the help. I'll check the sheet to see if it's ready. If it's in the back, though, I'll have to wait. Is something wrong? 
someone from corporate is back there and things are chaotic right now. Chaotic? It's a flower shop. I mean, how bad could it get? Oh, you don't even know the half of it. Simon leaned over the counter a bit and motioned for Sasha to come closer. Curious, Sasha obliged. It was a break-in last night. Some really spooky shit. So they sent someone to check in on everything, I guess. Even worse, apparently a dead dealer was found in an alley not far from here. Shit's crazy, Sasha. I've never seen it like this before. And don't even get me started on all the old ladies coming in for their poppies. They're the worst of all. The mention of a dead dealer made the back of Sasha's neck tingle. The dealer? Were they one of ours? I don't think so, but I don't remember either. It was only one dealer, but still. Be careful, Sasha. Abruptly, the door leading to the back room opened. Oh no, he hot. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Oh, this is, oh no, oh no, he's hot. Oh, emerging from the stock room was this guy with this iPad looking very hot. Okay, that guy is definitely a bouncer. Flower shops don't have bouncers though. Simon flashed Sasha a glance as if to alert him of the approaching man. Oh, that was so fast, all done back there then? Everything looks good so far. Oh yeah, one second. Let me find it. And okay, here you go. As if his life depended on how fast he could comply, Simon thrust out his arm and offered the man a white binder. I'm glad to see that baby's breath is selling well. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the wrong binder. Let me just quickly duck in down behind the counter. Simon frantically searched for the correct binder and popped up a few seconds later. Okay, yeah, purple binder for inventory. Here you go. Selling flowers and drugs is hard to keep track of sometimes. Uh, thanks. Oh, shipment. Sasha had his shipment. One second, Sasha. Let me go get that. Before the end of his sentence, Siren had already vaulted over the counter and brisk briskly headed to the back. Once Siren had slipped away, the room was filled with silence. The only sounds in the room now were the quiet taps and the man tapping on his tablet, typing on his tablet as he compared the notes in the count in the in the binder to his own. Sasha finally broke the silence. Flowers. Uh, serious business, I see. The man looked up from his tablet. My boss would argue it is. If a single petal in the shop ends up damaged, there will be hell to pay for it. Wait, are we really talking about flowers right now or something else? Wow, your boss sounds kind of... Oh. Sasha's thoughts were cut off by the incessant hawking from the vehicle outside the shop. Ah, that's my cue. Well, I hope you... I hope you have a good day. <laughs> Honk. Take care. Okay, that was so rude. With that, the man closed the binder and turned to leave, the bell on the door chiming faintly as he pushed through and left the store. Sasha peered out the window, watching the man get into the driver's side of the purple car. Man, I wish I had money. Okay, whew, wow, sorry that took so long. For some reason, I had to go to the back to find this one. Anyway, here, oh, did Vadim leave? That guy from corporate? Yeah, didn't get to say goodbye, oh well. With a shrug, Siren held out a rectangular purple box wrapped in a lavender ribbon. A small white logo was printed on the lid. Anyway, here's your shipment. And I remember what I said, yeah, about being careful? Saucer picked up the ornate box, lifting and rotating it as he examined the packaging. This looks more like a cake box. Good, then you can tell people it's just cake. See you, Sasha. Sasha gave a light chuckle, having no complaints about the inconspicuous shipment. Later. After his goodbyes, he pushed toward against the door and left. The sun overhead was intense, and Sasha squinted against the glare, lifting a hand to his forehead to shield his eyes. With his hand cradling the box under his arm, he walked toward the nearest bus stop. And with that, I think I am going to bring this to a close. My throat hurts. We're going to bring it to a close. But I want to thank everybody for taking the time to come out to the stream tonight. This game is absolutely gorgeous, and it has been a wild time just playing it. I'm going to be really excited to dive into this this weekend. This is probably the one stream that I'm going to do with the game, and then I really want to break down everything episodically. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. And uh, what I'll also be doing is dealing with my cat, who is uh, now knocking things off the vanity behind me. Yes, I'm going to rest my voice, but Kiwi, that's, are you touching the mascara ones? Don't do that. Okay, anyways, thank you all so much for coming to the stream. I really appreciate everybody coming out tonight. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. Bye, everybody.